Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's Kerbal Space Program video, well actually before we talk about today's video, I'm going to quickly remind you about what we did last week. We rescued Derbro Kerman from our LKO space station after he tragically contracted space pox. Now he has since been nursed back to health, he's been fully vaccinated, treated, he's ready to get back to work on the space station being chief engineer and all that. So we need to get him back to the station and bring back Bill Kerman, who is currently on board the space station, taking Durbro Kerman's place in the interim. However, it has come to our attention that Durbro Kerman, while he was the only one that exhibited symptoms of space pox, there is a chance that all the other crew members might have might might now have it basically so we need to bring them all home to scream them quarantine them and uh, treat them if necessary so we need to do a full crew swap out of our low kerbin orbit space station there are currently eight kerbals aboard the space stations we need to bring all of them back and replace them with eight i actually brought nine kerbals because i can't count apparently so we're going to be putting nine kerbals on board the state the space station uh, so that's what we're doing in today's video. I've designed this little SSTO because the fuel shortage that we had last week is now it it just it just got better, so we don't have to worry about you know launching things with a centrifuge anymore. Not that that really worked out. That that that, that was pretty dumb uh, on reflection trying to save fuel with a centrifuge. But hey, if you want to see me. Uh, launch a rocket with a centrifuge then you can click the card on screen if I remember to put one there uh, You can you can watch that anyway the, the SSTO is built uh, and now we're on the runway trust me <laughs> I'm on the map screen at the moment just selecting the space station as our target and time warping to a point where uh, We should get a pretty easy encounter very quickly after reaching space. So um, I don't really have a method for uh, determining when we should launch based on what we're trying to rendezvous with, but I feel like the peninsula just to the west of the Kerbal Space Center is a is a good spot. So space station just above the peninsula to the west of the KSC, uh, that's generally where I play, um, drop out of time warp when I'm tracking an object that I want to dock with. That was horrible phrasing, wasn't it? But I feel like somewhere in that uh, stream of consciousness, I got the point across, hopefully. Oh, look, there's the, uh, <laughs> if anyone's wondering what that debris is in the sea, that's because I did a sea launch. There's a lot of hearkening back to previous missions, isn't there, right now? Uh, but I did a sea-launched rocket a few weeks ago, and in order to get the sea launch platform into the sea, I had to drive it off the runway, and then I ditched the wheels once we were in the water, but apparently I never recovered the wheels. Ironically, I recovered the boat and everything. I didn't forget about that, but the wheels, they're still there. So we should probably, um, I probably won't remember. They're probably going to be there now. For the rest of time at least <laughs> in terms of uh, the rest of this save files lifespan which brings me to you know actually i should probably talk about the flight plan right before i start going on one of my tangents again um i did a lot of burning at sea level because we don't have great thrust to weight ratio when fully laden and fully fueled up those two rapier engines are not very powerful until they reach 440 meters per second until that point they're pretty sluggish they can't get us going anywhere too fast so i spent a lot of time burning really close to sea level because that's where there is the most oxygen that will obviously supply oxygen to the engines. <laughs> I feel like that didn't really need uh, particularly uh, in-depth clarification. But anyway, I spent a lot of time burning there until we got to 440 meters per second, at which point the rapier's thrust started exponentially increasing and we could gradually start tipping up uh, upward. And now we're in space, so that then you can fill in the gaps by watching the video, I suppose. Surprisingly enough, this has all been done in one take without a script. I'm just that good or bad. Uh, leave a comment down below uh, what your favourite uh, colour is. Mine's green, uh, but not because of Kerbal Space Program. I just like the colour green, you know. Um, what else? Oh, make sure you've liked the video, of course. Got to get out of the way. Uh, really helps me feed my family because the algorithm has the algorithm has not been shining too nicely upon this channel uh, recently. My videos they haven't been getting the views that I'm, I, I normally get. So you gotta like that video, uh, like and share. Check out my my my, my merchandise. You can buy a T-shirt in the description. And that's it. I've said all the things I need to say. So I'm just gonna leave the rest of the commentary. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it as silent. You can just. You can just have some royalty-free music. There we are. Beautiful. And uh, we can just leave it there. No, I, I like the sound of my own voice too much to do that to you guys. And uh, I don't really know where that joke was going. I think I was just struggling for things to talk about because I feel like what's happening on screen... I've already done uh, low-carbon orbit rendezvous quite a few times on this channel. And 
I, it's getting harder and harder to come up with creative variations of me just saying the same thing over and over again. And that's just gradually burn until you get to those separation encounters to be, you know, close. <laughs> and and then and then just do it. So we've, now we've got a close separation. As you can see, there is the space station. We can burn retrograde relative to our target and kill off all of our velocity. We can select a docking port as well. And it's a very terribly designed space station, really. I've decided that we need to do an expansion mission at some point to uh, extend those docking arms because the actual docking port that we need to access, which is the one that the shield has now opened, <laughs> um, it actually doesn't extend beyond the diameter of the gravity rings. So it's very, very hard to dock to if you've got a wide craft such as a space plane like this one. So that was good design. That was a good design choice on my part there. Luckily, the docking port is far enough ahead of the widest part of the wingspan that it's not going to cause any collision with the wheels. But really, I need to add an extended docking arm to that docking port just there to facilitate um, docking if we've got something with um, a less ideally placed docking port such as... Uh, I don't know. I, I guess a different style of space plane. I have had issues. I feel like it was quite recently. I had an issue where I couldn't dock a craft to this space station because of that docking port there. And I can't remember what the craft was or the context of it. So maybe you could leave a comment down below. I've already kind of... I've already given the call to action for commenting, haven't I? I've, I shouldn't be doing it again. Whatever. What else can we talk about? Oh, actually, this is quite funny. This is take two of this mission. I got to this point on take one before I realized I hadn't added any RCS ports to this space plane. So I very briefly tried to dock without RCS and uh, I gave up. It was just taking so long. Like, to be honest, it's taking such a long time to do this. It'd be quicker just to revert the flight uh, and then just add the monopropellant blocks and then just redo it again. So that's, that's a funny little anecdote. And in fact, speaking of anecdotes and uh, tangents and all that, I mentioned earlier about... I, was, I started one, then I said, oh, let's talk about the flight plan. And actually, I can't start this tangent again because I actually do want to talk about what I'm going to do next. I had a... Uh, <laughs> to be continued. I opened up a notepad file I created having a list of all the Kerbal names from the mission, all the Kerbals on board the SSTO, and I transferred all them across, and then I transferred all Kerbals that weren't on that list, i.e. all the Kerbals that are currently on the space station, I transferred them onto the SSTO. Uh, Jebediah and Valentina are the pilots in this scenario, so they stay on the SSTO regardless. I know they're not really needed because this is an autonomous SSTO, it's being controlled by that drone core, but uh, I just like the idea that we have pilots just to, in case, you know, in case the AI on board this space plane decides to, you know, turn evil, like in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. So uh, we have got the two pilots there just so we can assume control in case of that eventuality. Luckily that didn't happen, and can't happen because it's Kerbal Space Program, but it was a funny joke. I think we can all agree. Uh, now, I've sped the footage up quite a bit here. I was just quickly checking the names of all the Kerbals on board the space station to make sure I hadn't left any on board or hadn't transferred uh, the correct Kerbals across, but I hadn't. It was fine. So now we can just uh, think about departing. So we've got a nice little shot, and as you can see, we've got those gravity rings spinning up. They are going very, very fast, actually, because the footage is being played back at double the normal speed, just so that the frame rate is a bit nicer for you guys. And I am, this is quite a dangerous thing for me to talk about, but I am going to try and render this at 1440p, which I've never done before, because I could never get Sony Vegas to work properly, but I've now found, I found a tutorial that told me how to do it. Um, so I, I, I'm going to try and render this at 1440p. Who knows if it worked? But hopefully it did. And now I'm just going to... Oh, wow. We are very, very close to the Kerbal Space Center. So I'm going to do a very, very big retrograde burn. We're going to be doing a very, very steep re-entry. Luckily, the space plane, it can tolerate the heating. Uh, but yeah, probably if I wanted to do things realistically, I would have waited another orbit just so I could do a more shallow and realistic re-entry. But really, oh, I appreciate, you know, busy times in lockdown. Everyone's got lots of stuff to do and aren't just stuck at home. So we need to get things moving. Anyway, I mentioned earlier, I had a tangent that I wanted to start and I kept getting distracted. <laughs> but that was that, you know, we're Lown Aerospace 2, the second one, the safe file that I've been playing pretty much every mission on. It's getting old, you know, it's been here since 2019 and it's just starting to get a little bit cluttered. Navigating the space plane hangar and vehicle assembly building is a nightmare because of the number of crafts uh, that I have on, these sa on this save file space itself, there's space stations and satellites everywhere. It's all becoming a bit of a mess and I've just been thinking it'd be nice to reboot 
the save file at some point. Not anytime soon, because I've still got Destination Juna and Life on Lathe running. So I'd like to, you know, wrap up those uh, those serieses. Those seri? Whatever. <laughs> those series is in a meaningful way before um, a, a yeeting this save file. But I've been thinking about maybe doing another sort of playthrough. Would you guys like to see another science mode playthrough or a career mode playthrough? I feel like most people want to see a career mode playthrough because it is more challenging than science mode. But it's a lot more grindy. Like, there's a lot of repetitive busy work. And I feel like it doesn't really lend itself that well to the kind of videos I make. Where I just like, I like all of my videos to be fairly standalone. I know I have the occasional series like Green Harvest that's very reliant on watching previous episodes, but by and large, I like to think my videos can be enjoyed as single experiences. Narcissistic and arrogant as that sounds. Um, so I feel like I'm not sure if a career mode really would be the best option. I do have a, I have had an idea for a fun twist on the old science mode playthrough style, which I won't reveal just yet, but it's, a, it's an idea I've had. But I'd like to hear your thoughts down below and what did you think of this craft now that we've touched down on the uh, on the runway again i know it's uh it's it's a little bit cheaty i guess because we've got engine clipping but it's only i only clipped the engines like that at the back because of the aesthetic as you can see we've got those nose cones at the rear as well so it wasn't like there wasn't enough room for three engines in any other configuration but i thought it just looked a bit nicer to have three engines clipped very close together like that at the back uh so i hope i hope that the part clipping was acceptable for you guys. Uh, if it isn't, then the video on the left might not have had any part clipping. It's another video from my channel that YouTube's AI thinks you'll like. The video on the right is most likely a space this week because it's my most recent upload. And in the description, you can find links to other things such as social media, Discord, merchandise, all that good stuff. Uh, I think that's it now. I'm going to finish talking. Goodbye.